I don't think that writing CRUD applications is really enough anymore for personal projects. CRUD applications are create, read, update, delete apps. So if you ever made like a .NET web application, the out of the box template that has the, the weather forecast, it returns you what the weather forecast is. If you connect that to a database, you can, you can do your write and read operations on that. And that used to be, at, at a time, that used to be kind of like the golden standard of personal projects that you could deploy and you could send a link out. You could put that in your resume and you could include that as a project that you could talk about, you know, how you connected to a database, how you used services, how you use dependency injection, how you register the services, it it provided enough where, you know, you could talk about most things in a single application. Um, and I think that used to be the golden standard, but I just don't think that that's the case anymore because what we're seeing today in the current job market is a increasing scope of responsibilities and it's very evident in the fact that it's it's very difficult for developers, especially junior developers, to get a job currently. And junior developer jobs, the scope of responsibility or the scope of technologies that you're supposed to know about is just increasing. So I think that in order to in order to make yourself more competitive in today's already insanely competitive market. I think that you have to take your CRUD application and expand it. So one way to expand it, I think that you need to add Docker support. You need to containerize your application. So if you're in Visual Studio, if you're in .NET, this is literally as simple as right-clicking uh, your project and add a Docker file. Once you do that, you're going to go and add orchestration support, which is going to give you the Docker Compose file. And you can pretty much run your Docker Compose out of the box and not have to do any modifications. And it's going to boot up your, your um, container locally if you have Docker installed, and then you'll be able to run it. And then you'll be able to, um, you'll be, you'll be able to launch and debug your application. I think another way to do this, to expand your application, is going to be adding in um, some kind of cloud service, whether that's going to be a Lambda function in, a in AWS, whether that's going to be a queue service like SQS, a simple queuing service in AWS, or whether that's going to be some kind of uh, logging uh, system. And I think it's important that you, you start to bring in AWS into the equation uh, early on because I think that once you kind of start going through and learning different cloud services, it's just going to give you a better ability to talk more fluently about what cloud offerings are out there and how you can incorporate them into your application. So I would literally just pick one, pick something easy, but I would just begin researching what service can I introduce? Because when you do that, it's going to force you to learn how do you authenticate into the cloud provider? How do you send data to, let's say, the queue? And how, to, how do you... Um, how do you handle errors? Let's say the cloud, the service went down. How do you handle that? So those three things I think is going to be very uh, impactful in terms of your, you know, your own ability to talk through your your now system, right? Another thing that I would introduce is going to be just another system, or excuse me, another application entirely. And I would, I would introduce another application that can talk to your, your other application. So if you have a CRUD app, I would introduce another API. So if you want to make a .NET API, if you want to make a Rust API, if you want to make an API Python, whatever it is, I would make some other API and have it running locally on your system. Because uh, once you have another API running that can, you know, I don't know, if it, it doesn't even have to do much. It can just have a single endpoint and can return data from a database something simple. Um, but just to have another uh, service running, that way you can begin to think through, you know, what is a microservice architecture? What does it look like to communicate across services? And then you can talk about from there scaling, you can talk about 
uh, the need to maybe introduce a new type of messaging between your applications, whether that's uh, some kind of queue, whether that's with cache, whatever that, you know, memcache, whatever that is. You can introduce a lot of different things from that and you can talk about or at least introduce the conversation of scalability. And I don't think that that's, it's, I don't, I really don't think it's too many extra steps to do that, right? If you already have a CRUD application running, just go and make another .NET Web API and then you can talk to that if you have it running on localhost. Or if you have it in Docker, it's going to be your Docker internal host. So then you can just add that container to your Docker Compose file and then run it and then and then you should be good to go. But I would I would start to think about what more can you add into your basic CRUD application that is going to take you to the next spot that I think we're we're being forced into for junior developer positions. And I just it's going to take a while. It's going to take some time to think through all the additions that you you you're going to make to your CRUD app. But I think once you make those additions and sort through all the the errors and the configuration problems and all the the setup required to do that, I think that you're going to be in a much better spot uh, in terms of your own ability to talk through, you know, uh, some kind of like system design. Um, for me, if you go back on my channel, we had the we had the two stroke engine project. We have the Rust uh, service running that can consume data off of my RabbitMQ server. So that's what that's really what I'm talking about because I went through the process of making that and I ran into a lot of errors and configuration problems and it took me it took me many many hours to sort through those but now my code that I have on my on my you know my personal computer now I can use as notes whenever I run into these issues again and I think it really helped me to not only figure out how to do all this stuff but it also helped me be able to talk about all these concepts in a little bit better way. So I would I'll really just start there, th those additions that we, we talked about, and just see where, what else you can bring into the equation. Um, because I think that once you open the door for expanding your system, I think it's gonna really, I think you're gonna be surprised at how many ideas you're gonna have. Because once you start thinking about other technologies, I think that you know the sky's the limit for what is possible. If you want to introduce a Python service that adds some kind of data analysis to to your logs or to something that your system your CRUD application is processing, that can be a really really cool talking point in an interview, because that's what this all that's what this is all about, right? Building a personal project that's going to give you a talking point in an interview that will hopefully help you get a job and hopefully help you learn the skills necessary. To, to do well at your job and to be able to make cool uh, systems and, and write uh, write good code. So I hopefully this was helpful. If you have any more ideas, practical ideas about how to expand a basic CRUD application, um, let me know because I think that there's a lot of ways you could take this. Um, but this was these are just things that I think will be good to to look into at the very least. No, I get it. Like if you're, if you, if you just don't have time, you know, you don't have time, but if you do have time, I would, I, I would start working on this sooner than later because of how, just of how we, we, you know, just based on how we see the job market and what's, what's been happening. So, um, yeah, anyway, I'll see you in the next one.